What do you mean nobody knows who Julia Child is? Doesn't everyone know who Julia Child is? Yeah, everyone over 40. Hey, I'm only 39. All right, fine. Well, how about Emerald Lagasse? We can throw in a few BAMs every once in a while. No! All right, fine, whatever. Hello, and welcome to another Astro One video presentation. Some astronomers study objects like asteroids and comets, collectively known as stellar debris, because they have been relatively untouched since their formation billions of years ago. By studying these objects, it's like taking a look back in time to the very beginning of our solar system to see what it was composed of. Helping me today is my assistant, Stephen. Hi. Today, Stephen's going to make a comet. Now, this could get quite messy, but... No. What are you... No. I'm not doing it. Every time we do one of these video demonstrations, I end up getting injured. In case you haven't noticed, I've only got one good eye. So no, I'm not helping you make your comment. You do it. All right, fine. But you at least need to pour in the ingredients while I hold the bag. Fine. As I was saying, because today's demonstration can get quite messy, we need to take a few precautions. Comets are also known as dirty snowballs, because they're roughly half and half ice and rock. And so for our first ingredient, we're going to add some dirt. Next, we'll pour in some water, which is found in comets in the form of frozen ice. But water ice isn't the only ice found in comets. We also find other ices, like ammonia ice. find the presence of organic molecules, which we'll represent here by corn syrup. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, we need to add one more ingredient. Along with other ices, there's also the presence of carbon dioxide ice, also known as dry ice. Now, for this, you want to be careful. <gasps> Because if you touch dry ice with your bare skin, it can hurt. Steven? There you have it, a comet, or a dirty snowball. Do you hear that sound? That's the sound of gases escaping from the comet. As the dry ice is turned directly from a solid into a gas, what's known as sublimation, they make their way through the comet, ultimately escaping and creating a coma of gases surrounding the comet. Then as the sun shines on the comet, it pushes this gas away, forming what's known as an ion, or a gas tail. Here we have a comet that I made previously. If we break it open and look inside, you can see that the comet is not solid all the way through, but it has cavities inside. As the ice is turned from a solid to a gas, they leave behind holes. So comets are porous. This creates a lower density in the comets, such that they are much lower in density than water. So there you have it. Join us again next time for another fun astronomy concept. See you next time. As I was saying, today's demonstration can get quite messy, so we need to take a few precautions. Find the loop. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
we find it one more type of ice in comets as well, carbon dioxide ice, also known as dry ice. Now, we want to be careful here because dry ice <gasps> can hurt your skin if you dry ice directly. Way to go.